reopening our state parks and allowing for golf courses to reopen. This order will take effect at sunrise this Saturday, May 2nd. And this will bring us in line, broadly speaking, with our neighboring states. As I have previously said, I did not want to see us in a situation where residents would be needlessly crossing state lines in either direction. This is the Michael K show. We cannot have everyone rush out to a park or a golf course. Social, Social distancing, distancing will be strongly enforced. On 98.7 ESPN. All right, a press conference from earlier in the day, Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey, um, opening the state up just a little bit, and he's nice enough to join us now. Governor Michael, Don, and Peter, how are you doing? Hey, guys, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, we appreciate it. So when you make decisions like the one that we just played, do you confer with Cuomo and Lamont just to make sure that everybody's on the same page? Now, each one has different things you have to worry about, but are you in constant contact with them before you make such a call? Yeah, in this case, it was our chiefs of staff, but the answer is yes. We, we speak uh, either myself personally or our teams constantly. We, we realize that as we shut our states down like four to six to eight weeks ago at this point, uh, we, were, we were constantly comparing notes uh, and the example that uh, Andrew Cuomo and I were using frequently is you don't want a restaurant in Jersey City to have a different reality than one on the lower west side of Manhattan. And, and, and we determined, you know what, as we begin to think about reopening our states, even if it's not tomorrow, why don't we do the same thing and let's put a little formal council around that. So each state, we're now seven states. We've each contributed our chiefs of staff plus two appointees, and it's a group that talks literally all the time. Now, how long, uh, Governor, will it take for you to know that this decision ended up being the right one where you can move on to another phase? I don't want to be too uh, black and white, but I'll probably know Sunday night or Monday morning at the latest whether or not folks did it the right way. Mm -hmm. so, so we wouldn't be taking this step on the state parks and golf unless the, the curves, the, the infection curves, the hospitalization curves were flattening or going down. They are, thank God. We're still, by the way, losing. I mean, I, I, I assume f folks realize the gravity on, on your listening audience, but it's, we, we announced 329 deaths mm. today. I mean, it's just, it's now 6,770 lost lives. So the, 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 the fatalities, God bless them all, are sort of a lagging. These are folks who were infected in many cases weeks ago. But the infection and hospitalization curves are going in the right direction, which has allowed us to say, you know what, let's give this a shot. The weather's getting a little better. There is a valid mental health argument that we've got people cooped up for week upon weeks upon weeks. But we gotta, we're going to be very uh, uh, aggressive in not just, just enforcing but observing this weekend that folks don't congregate. They keep their distance. I'm begging folks, folks to wear face coverings. If it goes well, that portends a, a very good uh, park season going forward. If it doesn't, we're going to have to reconsider. Governor Murphy of New Jersey is our guest here on the show. Uh, this is a, kind of a philosophical question because the thing that is so distressing to me is that people view – this situation and this pandemic through political lenses, and I think uh, it, it, it makes me angry. Uh, yeah. If there was no pressure from the other side and from people that are actually protesting in other states, if you had your druthers and the economy didn't have anything to do with it, would you still have everything shut down for a while? Yeah, and in fact, I said this um, today when I announced that we were going to reopen the state and county parks and golf. I said, I want, I want to acknowledge all the many people out there who have protested me, and they protest me as well, uh, who have made speeches, who have spoken to the press, who have called me, who have texted me. I want you to know everything you did didn't matter one little bit. <laughs> we're making okay. this decision mm -hmm. based on the facts, whether or not we think the curves going in the right direction uh, allow us the freedom to do this. And again, there's a mental health argument, guys, that I, I, I have to understand score here. You've got a lot of people who are just desperate to get out. Um, so the answer is the, the pressure is out there, but the pressure is on all sides. We just got to call the balls and strikes as, we, as best we can see them. We pray that we do get to a point where certain businesses can open and the economy and people can go back to work. Does opening schools and daycares have to coincide with that? 
uh, Governor, so that the people that go back to work have someone to be able to keep an eye on the kids? You, you guys are asking great questions, uh, and I'm huge fans of yours, by the way, I should say. Um, not necessarily. Uh, we have not made a determination on school. We have said that at least until May 15, uh, we're remote learning, at least until then. And, and I mentioned today we'd make it, we'll make an announcement. I don't think we're going to wait till May 15, uh, but I, I can't give you any sense yet as to whether or not we're going to stay remote for the balance of the school year or, or call folks back in too early to tell. Um, likewise, we've got essential businesses, remember, that are already out there and, and working. They've got to social distance. They've got to practice, you know, wear face masks, uh, et, et cetera. Um, th so the curves between business on the one hand and, and education decisions on the other aren't necessarily in sync. But I will say this, the similar protocols, whenever they open, similar protocols will be in place. In other words, I can't see a restaurant opening at, you know, this is one guy's opinion, and I've got, we just a, a appointed a commission to advise us on stuff like this. I can't see a restaurant opening with more than 50% capacity, for instance, or X feet apart between tables. I would think whenever it is that schools open again, uh, again, we haven't made that call yet, you've got similar realities. Governor, I, I know this is uh, this is tough. I, I really appreciate the idea of golf courses. I, I play golf and have thought, well, this seems like something that could be open. Um, but you talked about the mental health component, and it does seem like that that's an activity that benefits a certain sect of sort of the well-to-do population. Yeah. Um, you know, we know that culturally golf is a game that more affluent people tend to play. Yeah. Are there any activities and things that could reopen in the near future for other people who maybe aren't avid golfers yeah the, the, by the way i'm not a, a golfer i golf once a year and, and you should be happy not not being the foursome behind me uh <laughs> uh there's not much of a course left uh but the, the fact of the matter is that weighed heavily on me you know, th this is let there be no doubt this is like a lot of other things in life taking the disproportionate toll out of those who have been left behind in particular out of communities of color if you look at our fatalities the african-american rate uh... is about fifty percent higher than it is in the overall uh... society in new jersey so it did weigh heavily and uh... it's a it's a reason why we married golf with state and county park opening because other states have opened golf but kept parks closed which meant that it was even worse uh, because the privates were the only ones that were able to open and not the publics. So we at least added that, th that these are going to go in harmony, that any courses that are public are going to be uh, a part of this. I don't have any activity off the top of my head. We have explicitly said no team sports uh, in, in, in parks. Um, and, and so I, I don't have a crisp answer for you other than your premise is exactly right, and it's part of the reason why we married golf to state and county parks. We didn't want to just make this even more elite uh, reality with uh, private courses. Now, I know you, you have a, a limited time to be with us, so I wanted to ask you this. You have the numbers in front of you. Uh, you see the graphs and all of that, and you share it with the public. But in your estimation, Governor, can you see any scenario where the Giants and the Jets – would play at MetLife Stadium in front of 70,000 people in this year? Tough question. Um, I, I don't know, but it, as I sit here right now, it's hard to see. I mean, sports in our state are a big deal. Uh, I spoke with both John Mara and Chris Johnson and his team within the past number of days. Josh Harris, uh, who obviously they've got the Devils and, and the Sixers are headquartered now in Camden. Uh, it's hard to see. It, it is just... Uh, Given that we know uh, congregation with no social distancing is uh, is the, the the gasoline on the fire in this virus, uh, it's for the foreseeable future. I can't see it. I, I, I'm not saying definitively, but I just can't see it. Um, can, you can, know, we, you, can you see without people in the stands, yeah, 100 people on the field? Yeah, we were talking about that potentially. I mean, that's at least a lot more. Uh, uh, achievable, I think. But you've got you know, you've got the reality. Of what happens to those? And I know you guys have discussed this. What happens to those hundred people when when the game is over? Right. You, you know, are you are they isolating? And how long can that realistically last with families? And and uh, can you keep people in a bubble? I'm the former U.S. ambassador to Germany. I'm a big 
um, sports fan. Uh, I actually, my wife and I are majority owners of the women's pro soccer team in New York, New Jersey. Um, the Germans are, are going to open the Bundesliga up, it uh, looks like, uh, sometime mid-May with no fans, which I get that. But I, you know, the, the only thing there is they've only got like 10 or 12 games left in their season, and they play, you know, they can play that in a fairly compressed time zone. You got NFL teams coming in in July, in, in the current schedule, and the Super Bowls in February. I don't know how you keep, you know, I don't know how you keep that in a bubble even without fans uh, for for what, what would be six months plus. I know your time is up. We appreciate yes. you giving us as much as you have. Uh, we really do love talking to you, and you give our, our fans a lot of information that they need. Listen, you guys are the best. I'd love, I'll come on anytime, and God bless you all. All right. Thank all you, right. Governor. Thank, thank you, guys. Governor. That's Governor Murphy. And, and yeah. boy, I, I think that, that's, that's a very honest answer because he's got all the information in front of him. And you tell me how you're going to allow 75,000 people without a vaccine. 75,000 people crammed into one place to watch the Jets or the Giants. So if he says he doesn't see it, he didn't say definitely not, he, he doesn't see it. And then when you ask him about a game in front of no fans, he's wondering where the 100 people are going to go. And 100 is very, very conservative because there's 53 players on each team. Right. So that's 106 right there. Then you've got coaches and trainers and doctors and things like that and medic other medical professionals I, I, I mean, again, I don't want to be the doom and gloom guy, but when you hear Bob Costa say, I don't see sports being played in this country in 2020, those are the reasons why, what Governor Murphy just said. It's pie in the sky, minus a vaccine, to think that you're going to be playing giant and jet games this or, calendar year. Or, or 